Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. This is my weekly uh, Bitcoin and Electronium and some other stuff video with Amir Ness and also Mario from the Moneco 64 channel. Mario was on my um, channel a few days ago and uh, he did a really, really great call on the Bitcoin technical analysis. It was great because he was accurate. Not because I liked it. I didn't like it. Right. But we're going to be doing some technical analysis on Bitcoin, finding out what's happening with Elevate. And also Electronium, some news about Electronium, plus anything else that takes our fancy in this conversation. Oh, actually, one other chart that Mario is going to um, show us, which, is, which has a bearing, a fundamental bearing, I think, on the whole cryptocurrency space. Now, before we start with that, please subscribe, comment, like, whether you're on YouTube or BitTubers, um, just place a comment in the description below. It really, really does make a difference. Okay, let's get going. All right, so good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you doing, Rich? I'm doing very, very well. Amir in Israel, myself in Mario in, in the UK. Uh, Mario, do you want to start by just saying a little bit about yourself? Uh, good afternoon first, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, my background is... Uh, in finance, I started out at a small private bank in the late 80s in Geneva, Switzerland. Moved to London in 1992, and I worked as a first as a U.S. Treasury uh, cash broker for a few months, and then I went into the futures market for 20 years, mostly the bond market. And uh, the reason I look at uh, cryptocurrencies and precious metals is because. Uh, I started looking into the uh, monetary system early 2000, early 2000s. Uh, and why did I do that? Well, because I started uh, reading uh, Austrian School of Economics. I bought my first gold coin, and uh, that's how I became a proponent of sound money. Later on in 2013, I discovered uh, Bitcoin, and I thought it was very interesting. It's the digital concept gold concept of, of bitcoin the fact that it's a limited supply of about 21 million i think mm -hmm. i think we're up to 20 to 17 now but it's going to take a really long time to get to 21 million <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh and i started my youtube channel uh late 2015 uh very small of course <laughs> uh used to get a few views now i get thousands uh and uh I just try to talk about the markets, precious metals, cryptocurrencies, not as much, even though I have covered quite a bit in the past, and uh, give pe people my opinion of the system and the markets, uh, and that's it. Yep, thank you. And I, I, I remember your channel when you'd get like a handful of views every day and you need a few hundred subscribers. And I learned a lot about the money markets from your channel. So I'm going to have a link in the description below. So please go and subscribe to his channel and um, follow him and educate yourself about finances. And then also, then we have Amir. Amir is the, uh, one of the co-founders of Elevate Group. And uh, I think if you're a regular viewer to this channel, you'll know Amir well. Now, what I want to do is Amir, if you want to give it, I'm going to start sharing the screen and let's have a look at Elevate Group. If you've got any news about Elevate Group and say a little bit about Elevate Group for anybody who's new to this. Amir? Uh, so, sure. So we're a Bitcoin mining farm or a data center <clears throat> where customers can buy their own miner and we will purchase it from the manufacturers. We will place it in our farm and you get to take advantage of our low cost uh, electricity and on-site engineers. <clears throat> I guess what's new is we just received a new batch of the Inner Silicon 57 terahash miners. Uh, we've also reduced the price because we were able to get a little bit of a reduction because of what's going on with uh, Bitcoin prices right now. Um, and so yeah, those, those miners are online or will be able to go online within about two, three days of your purchase. And we've already updated our site. So, um, so that's, that's the announcement of, about new miners. And then um, our new dashboard, which is going to have automatic payments directly into your wallet, that is coming out in like, I'd say about seven days or so. So like next week. Um, so yeah, that's it. Good stuff. Thank you. 
And just for people who are new to this, they don't know how this, this is available to US citizens because you're, you're buying a, a product. You're actually buying the rig. You register, do KYC, you pay for the rig in Bitcoin. It gets, uh, Elevate Group handles all the logistics and the customs and the duty and everything gets delivered to their facility and they already have some in stock. And then the mine, the, the Bitcoin that's mined drops into your wallet minus the electricity cost, which and minus the uh, 20% fee that management fee that um, Elevate Group take. Apart from that, there's nothing else to pay. And I've got a, I'll show a link to this. This is the Elevate Mining Profits, Bitly Elevate Mining Profits, and I'll link to this in the description below. And this shows you the payouts on a monthly basis depending upon whichever miner you bought. So you can actually see and work out for yourself. And then why I'm interested in this why I'm because I have miners that I've purchased with Elevate Group is because I wish I'd started mining in five years, five years ago. So come 2024, I'm going to be able to say, thank goodness I started five years ago. <laughs> That's how that goes. right? So just a question, because I, I don't own a miner. Uh, is it still worth it? You think, of course it must be if you just uh, got another 200, uh, Miners. Yeah, I mean, it goes, mining goes mining goes through cycles just just like anything else. So right now we're in what I would call a bear cycle because two months ago the um, the monthly ROI on on a T three was about three hundred and forty dollars a month, right? So it was like you know ten percent a month, twelve percent a month. And now that's gone down to about one hundred and twenty dollars. So you know it's a dra it's a drastic change from three months ago. But that's also because you know BTC price came from came down from twelve thousand to seven thousand. So it's volatile. You know um, the thing about mining is that it's um, it's kind of a it's consistent cash flow. So even though it's volatile, you didn't lose fifty percent of your investment. Whereas if you were in BTC, you would have lost you know quite a bit of your investment. But on the other hand, um, you know you're not going to double your investment overnight either. So it's I guess it's the the equivalent of dollar cost averaging is yeah. just kind of how you would look at it basically. Yeah, yeah, and then. The other thing, um, Mario, is that as far as I can tell, some of the biggest players in the Bitcoin ecosystem are the miners. Plus, I read something the other day that in 2140, the block reward for Bitcoin will be one Satoshi. Now, to make it worthwhile, I, I have no idea how much one Satoshi will be work it, worth in 2140. It'll just it's amazing that it's going to take... The, the, the numbers are 17 million uh, in circulation now, and then we've only got 4 million left, and it's going to take another 120 years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think the other thing that makes it viable is the built-in scarcity with, um, with Bitcoin. And even if the – and I, I, we talked about this in our interview. Um, even if the demand stays the same, because of the scarcity, price is going to go up. But actually what's happening is the demand is increasing and I think is going to continue to increase because of what's going on in the money markets. So that's my answer Those, and Amir's answer to your question. Yeah. Anything, else, anything else you want to know or ask? Um, I mean, uh, so are the miners there, there are different miners there. Uh, are some more productive than others? Is that why you've got different, I guess, yeah, they have uh, different costs? Yeah, some are, but now we've moved to the latest model, which is the Inner Silicon T3. And the S17 from Bitmain is, is actually even more efficient, but the problem with Bitmain nowadays is it's very difficult to deal with them, so we stopped selling those. <clears throat> so we only sell the T3 from Inner Silicon now. Yeah. Do you mind me asking how much it costs? Yeah, no, no. It's um, depending on how many you buy, anywhere from twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred. So, like twenty eight hundred is if you buy twenty of them, you know, and thirty two hundred 
is if you buy one of them, right? So th there's a, a big uh, difference in cost. And they're generating right now about 120 a month at 7,000 BTC. And uh, what about like uh, when the, your miner uh, becomes obsolete? Do you upgrade it and do, you, do, do people, the owners have to uh, pay, pay again or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, the, the idea is that you've already, by the time it becomes obsolete, you've already made more than your money back and, and you've got your, you know, your investment is done. To give you an example, we still have S9 miners that are running and those are like four years old. So in order for the miners that you're buying today, in order for them to become obsolete in the next two years, three years, you have to have some pretty nasty market conditions. All right. Yeah. And then one of the things that happens, if the Bitcoin price falls too low, miners shut off their machines because it just isn't worth it. So then there's less Bitcoin, there's less, there's less miners working uh, to mine Bitcoin. So then the block reward, it doesn't, it doesn't, the, the supply changes, that doesn't change. But the miners then start getting more Bitcoin per rig. The difficulty goes down. So then it becomes profitable. So then they come back in. It's very, so does, clever. does Elevate uh, keep mining no matter where the market goes? Or do you, yeah, would you yeah, stop? I mean, Listen, we're, we're lucky. We have, we have really good economics at our facility. We, uh, we never shut off, even in the last bear market, like the, the crypto winter. Um, profits got really low, but we were still profitable. And funny enough, just today when BTC dumped to like 6,500, I sent a message to, the, um, uh, to my partner to find out if if the rigs were still profitable at that at this price and they were so um so we've got a good economic situation we just like to see higher btc prices because the re returns are going to be so much higher you know like that's yeah. that's what we want absolutely we would we would and it is uh, i think because of the electricity is five and a half cents per kilowatt hour and because it's so cold it's so cold in Siberia. <laughs> the electricity uses a whole lot less and it's cheaper anyway. So yeah. uh, it stays profitable. Okay, yeah. anything else, Mario, before we move on? Anything else for you, Amir? No, oh, that's it. That's okay. it. Not, not, not from my side, though. I would invite people, if you want to check, if you to do your own due diligence, go join the Telegram group, have a look at the chart. The, the, the spreadsheet had the links to the Telegram group and the website in there. So go through that and then ask any questions that you have. And this may or may not be for you, but you'll only know that by investigating it. Now let's have a look at the Bitcoin price. And uh, this is on Coin Trader. Please ignore this arrow. Okay, <laughs> ignore this arrow. <laughs> what I was doing, this is the daily chart from Coin Market Cap, but showing candles and everything. Ignore the arrow on this one. This is what you drew the other day when we spoke, um, Mario, and what you said is that you drew it a little bit differently. Yeah, it, it was from the, the top uh, top line there, like that. Yeah, it was. And now bring bring it down. Yeah, it, it, similar to that. Yeah, we broke that. Basically, if you want, I can bring it up. Sure. If you've got it easy to hand while I... Yeah, I just need to put, if you wait, wait, wait one minute here. Yes. Uh, let's see Bitcoin. That was it. I think that was it. Uh, just one second, please. That's my dog snoring. I'm sorry if you can hear <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite some snore. <coughs> be funny if it turned out to be a little chihuahua. With a no, it's a shit suit. So, yeah. Uh, all right. I, I've got the chart. Can I share it now? Yeah, hold on a second. Oh, let's see. I need share. To give you share permissions. There you go. Can you see it? Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that that's what I was looking at, and I think we when I was talking to 
uh, Rich, the other day, we're just about to drop below that. And I said that we could uh, go to another line here, which I'll draw right now, uh, which was, I think, this one here. Which was this one here, right? <laughs> so, I mean, the other day it went down to 6,800 pretty close to it today is come back down and it's rebounded off that line. So, uh, behind that. So I guess now we need to go back above 8,000, like, uh, in the short term to, to become, to confirm maybe a bottom, <laughs> but at the moment I would say it's still going to probably stay a little bit under pressure. Right. Okay. Yeah. To go below this downtrend or it will just keep bouncing up and down this falling wedge. It looks like it, you know, it, today it went below it, but not um, for that long. So it could stay bouncing off the lower line, I guess. Uh, so let's say if we go to the middle of December, that would mean it would be around 6,200. And uh, But then the upper uh, line gets lower. So uh, that's an, a plus as well. That means you won't have to go up as much to maybe uh, become more bullish. Okay. Okay. Now a falling wedge tends to be bullish and you get a breakdown break. Yeah, that's right. To the, um, to yeah, we had that in October, but it, it looks like it failed and it would be, you see it's from, if you look at the low in April yeah. to the high, when was it, in July, that's the, the, the trend, right? And now this is the consolidation that we've had. So, yeah, usually it's a, it doesn't work all the time. I mean, technical analysis uh, is a good tool, but sometimes it doesn't work. But uh, three out of four times, uh, you know, these patterns uh, work. Yeah, yeah. They, and they work, my understanding is they work because what they show is human behavior. Yeah, that's what's happened. Uh, you know, you look at charts from the past, they do the same thing. Yeah. And it's vice versa, you know, when the market's going down, and then you have a, a rising wedge. And it's the other way around. Sure, 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 sure. So if I understand, Mary, what you're saying is likely to go up to about 8000. And then if it doesn't break out out of that falling wedge and then maintain that, it's going to go back down into the falling wedge. Again. Yeah, usually uh, if we draw this further out, uh, yep. we're su it's supposed to do something before it reaches uh, the apex, you see, of that uh, falling wedge, which would be <laughs> sometime uh, in January next year. Uh, so there you go. So it could, we could stay within that wedge for a while, but uh, most of the time it breaks out before reaching the uh, apex there. Right. Okay. Very good. Amir, anything for you? Anything you can see? Uh, listen, no. <laughs> it's just either going to go up or down <laughs> or stay sideways. <laughs> I, I, this I, is just short-term moves. But I mean, in the long term, I, oh, like I in think the long uh, term, cryptocurrencies much. are going to be, you know, they're printing so many, so many fiat currencies, so much fiat currency now, Absolutely. all central bank. And now their central bankers are uh, telling the governments to start borrowing more. Christine yeah. Lagarde the other day. So it's only going to get worse. Yeah, yeah. In, in the long term, I'm very bullish, but I stopped looking at short term pricing just because, you know, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, it, it's myop myopic and it gets you into, yeah. Yeah. So, I, don't, I don't trade, I, I hodl. So that's all I do. Yeah, I don't trade as well uh, anymore. I used yeah. to trade a lot, but uh, I bought some, uh, some Bitcoin uh, last week. Um, so, yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Well, if I, if I zoom out, right, so one of the things I can see is the volume has picked up considerably on this green candle. This is the day, mm -hmm. and the bears were unable to keep it below this trend line, which is what you'd drawn, uh, Mario, yeah. on your chart. So this is a little bit bullish. So we could be going, bouncing off here, and then we want it to uh, go above and then stay above and then yeah. never come down ever again. But we shall see.
And the other one I want to have a look at is electronium. Now, I don't know, Mary, do you know anything about electronium? Do you know much about it? I've heard of it, but I don't know, uh, to be okay. honest. Uh, UK-based uh, project. They ICO'd in September, September, October 2017. Incredibly successful ICO. Their head office is in Maidstone, and um, they had more participants in their ICO than any other ICO. A ridiculous number. And it's a mobile phone currency, mobile phone-based currency, which is designed to um, really make bring about financial inclusion for the unbanked. This is the dollar chart. Now ignore these previous lines, which I should have. Yeah. Right. And it, it was at about 20 cents in the crazy days of 2017. And lately it's been at about a third of a cent. Mm. Mm. As they're building out this program. And then on Friday, they announced this news that guy who was the former director for the for UNICEF in UK has now joined their board of their board of directors, and uh, he's he was pri prior to that he was also head of Amnesty International in the UK. So he's incredibly well connected in the NGO space, and is going to be bringing his NGO connections into to Electronium and his experience in there to help uh, Electronium keep building out their um, their platform and their service for the unbanked and the underbanked. And I can hear your, I can hear your dog snoring. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Stop Mary, it, it's fine. Mary, I'm waking him up maybe. <laughs> we've, got four, we've got four guests. We've got four yeah. guests on this show, right? There he I is. Did a video, I did a video about the UNICEF director, David Bull, um, this Saturday gone. So I invite people to go and watch that to find out more. I just looked into this background. But in terms of the price, nothing. It's below the EMA. Um, volume picked up, I don't sometime in the middle of last week, but the announcement was on the Friday, which was here on the 22nd. So the bull bears tried to push it down. Not much happened, but then they, they succeeded. Anything for you, Amir? <laughs> Amir and I, we, we're both invested in Electronium. Are you? <laughs> well, we're, just we're just waiting now. Well, so, from what I see from where the price was, 20 cents to now a third of a cent, uh, it can't, well, it can go lower, of course, but the potential uh, to buy yeah. some is now, quite uh, a 600 times, isn't it? A 600 yeah. bagger you could have here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where can we, can you buy this on uh, any exchange? It's on many, many exchanges. Mm. It's on many, many. I'll, ha I'll have a look. Maybe I'll buy yeah. a few. Wait, <laughs> now, please don't take investment advice from a social worker and a Bitcoin miner. No, and it's just your invest, opinion, but... Uh, and yeah. don't invest any more than you can afford to lose. Oh, and Mario, <laughs> what I can do is I can give you my referral code, which will give you a 1% bonus on the app. You just keep the app open once a week or something, and then you get free coins dropped in. Up to three right. worth of month. <laughs> okay. And then I get a little bonus and then you get a referral code and you can pass it on to your dog and your dog can start getting <laughs> eight drops. In, he in prefers drops. silver. He, he, he buys <laughs> silver, Billy. Yeah. He's a silver bug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. But that's Electronium. All right. Do you want to, you wanted to show us a chart because I asked you to based upon your expertise and experience. And I'd like you to bring that up now but also link it to cryptocurrencies. What is the relevance to cryptocurrencies? You, you, you're talking about the, the stock market now, yeah? Yeah. I spoke to you earlier, yeah, in the pre-interview. Uh, yeah, let me stop sharing. bring it up. Let me, how do I, stop I will share it. Uh, so oh, this is a monthly chart of the hold Dow on. I'm going to bring up. Hold on. Let me... Uh, hold on a second. Uh, now you can... Let me sh share... Here we go. You can see it, yeah. Yeah. I I just think it's uh, <laughs> it's not it's not a bottom, is it? So, and I know we've broken out, and it could go higher, but uh, before any big fall, there must be a rise, right? But uh, I just uh, think that uh, 
I don't know how long it's going to keep going. I have a, another longer term chart, which I don't have here right now, but it's going back to 1920 mm -hmm. and it's a logarithmic chart and the trend line uh, from the top in 1929 and the top in 2000, uh, I think uh, eight, there's a trend line that comes around 30,000 uh, in the Dow. So we could go a little higher, but, uh, to me, this just seems hugely overvalued. And uh, why as well? Well, because uh, a lot of the move in stocks has been because of stock buybacks by corporations who have been issuing debt uh, uh, very cheaply, taking the cash that they, it, they, they receive from issuing the bonds and buying back their stock. That's the only reason why the stock market is up is not – anything uh, like economic uh, that we're in a new economic era that the economy is doing really well. Uh, so, and I think when it turns, yeah, gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, they're going to do really well uh, right now. This is probably why uh, the re you know, the, the fact that we've gone up here, this is probably why golden uh, cryptocurrencies are a little bit under pressure. Yeah. And it just goes to show that gold and cryptocurrencies are actually uh, safe haven assets now because when this happens, people want to have risk. So there you go. Yep. That's, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the whole stock buyback thing is also a way for them to uh, give the illusion of increased earnings, right? Because their, their earnings per share would look higher if there were fewer shares outstanding. Yeah, the and, denominator shrinks. So yeah. right, right, and that's yeah. And where are they getting the money from? Because I read an article uh, by by selling bonds by borrowing. You yeah. see, borrowing. because the bank, you know, the banks now are getting uh, loads of money to from the repo. There's yeah. more QE, so the banks, uh, they lend the money to fund managers and hedge funds, and then the hedge funds, they've got all this uh, cash that they leverage as well, and then the corporations will come out and issue a 10-year bond at, I don't know, 3%, which is still you know, relatively cheap, and these hedge funds will buy that, and when they buy that, the cash from the hedge funds flow to the corporations and they take that cash and buy the stock back. And the executives, they don't care because they have the stock options. The stock goes up, you know, they liquidate, they rake in, they get very rich. And if everything implodes later on, they don't care because they, they're yeah. not really in, uh, issuing the bonds to invest in the companies to improve the product. They're just, it's all financial engineering. Yeah. yeah, they get richer. So you get Jamie Dimon, who's a very yeah. secret bank manager, is a billionaire. How does a bank manager become a billionaire? That's extraordinary. And it is what you're saying matches an article I read by Gerald Salente last week that the why gold, the price of gold is suffering and silver is suffering is because of the repo, where the Fed is. I don't quite understand the mechanics, but they're injecting money, they're lending money at very short term very low rates or very short term to the banks and stuff. And it is QE4 and no one's talking about it. Well, the repo market is supposed to be a market where the Fed just stands aside and uh, primary dealers uh, and corporations and hedge funds, they borrow and lend to each other. But that market just, co <laughs> the rates went up to 10% in September. So no one trusted in each other anymore. So the Fed had to step in. Uh, and wow. then they've also announced uh, 60 billion on top of that of QE, which is different from the repo. Yes, which is why in, in a climate like this, even though gold, silver and Bitcoin don't look attractive because the price is going down. But I think as a long term bet, as a safe haven asset. That's what you want to be in. Amir, anything for you? No, I'm just about done. It was nice chatting with you guys. Okay, Maria, anything for you? Not really either. Uh, I enjoyed the chat as well. Okay, Mary, listen, thank you so much. And if you are a subscriber to my channel, please go and subscribe to Mario's channel. Uh, if you 
have subscribed from Mario's channel and you're watching here. Thank you so much. And um, between now and when I see you next, oh, comment, subscribe, like all that business. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with Crypto Profits. This is Crypto Rich signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.